Um, hello, everybody. I'm Councillor Richard Thomas, and I'll be chairing the meeting this afternoon. Uh, to my right... No? You have to appoint a chair. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. My apologies. I think Louise starts first, don't you? Sorry, Louise. My apologies. I'll propose Councillor Thomas. Sorry. Um, let's, uh, let's deal with appointment of a chair, a chair first. Um, can we have a, a proposer for a chair, please? Close Councillor Thomas. And is that seconded? Seconded. Thank you very much. Over to you, Chair. Thank you very much. My apologies for that at the beginning. Right, so uh, next, uh, um, am I authorised to sign the minutes of the meeting of the General Licensing Panel held on the 30th of January 2023 as a correct record of the proceedings? Yes. yes. I do that. And I will. Second page, right. I see. There we go. That's that. Okay. Right. Do I have any apologies to absence, please? No, there's none this week. No, none. And we come now to disclosure of interest. Uh, do any of the members present have a personal interest in the matters on the agenda? Uh, can you also let me know the nature of the um, interest and whether it's prejudicial? Or what otherwise, please? No interest, Chair. Interest? None, Chair. None, Chair. Nor, nor do I say there are, are no interests. So now we come on to the main business of the meeting, which is the report of the Head of Service and Environmental Services. If I can just introduce the members of the panel. Uh, to my right is Councillor um, Catherine Field. To my left is Councillor Hazel Timpey. Um, uh, Rob... Um, uh, Cameron, Cameron, sorry, is the officer who will be helping us today, the legal officer. Um, and uh, that, that's so we're, we're, we now all know who we are. Um, so now we come to the report. So um, can I please have the report um, in relation to the matter? Yeah. The matter? Yeah. yeah, if I may interrupt, sorry. I understand that um, one of the objectors has requested to circulate some, uh, I believe, photographs. Uh, it might be, if you are minded to allow that with your discretion, um, a good opportunity to take a short adjournment to allow uh, the applicant to see these and have the opportunity to consider them, and also for yourselves to have a look after that before we proceed any further. Um, in that case, I think that's a very reasonable request, and I'm happy to grant it. But I think it is there, as you have suggested, that everybody present have a, a chance to look at these photographs and um, you know, make their own evaluation of them. And so I think an adjournment for about five minutes would be appropriate to do that. Thank you, Chair. So should, uh, we should do that at this point. So, so if you would like to show those photographs and then people can take At this point, I call upon Mark Randall uh, to make his report on this matter. Thank you, Chair. Just for Mrs. Deep Rose's purpose, uh, benefit, so the Chair's accepted the photographs. When it comes to your chance to speak, you can reference them. Thank you, Chair. Back to the, uh, the standard licensing report in front of you regarding the application for the grant of a premises license at the Three Legs Brewing Company, Beaching Road Studios, Unit 11, Beaching Road, Bexhill. If you enter Beaching Road from the police station end, screw fixes on your left then it's down that alleyway alley of uh, industrial units on the right uh, further details can be shown on the location plan pages 15 license area plan uh, and 17 and some photographs on pages 18 and 19 like all quite self-explanatory photograph one you can see the rooftops of the houses in Colbert Road towards the rear, photograph one, and then the unit with the bigger arrow on the right. Again, photograph three with an arrow uh, to the unit, and then opposite view from the unit back towards Beaching Road. So there's the proposed licence premises as an existing commercial unit. Uh, in paragraph two, the applicants described uh, the premises. 
I won't read that word for word. Uh, just a couple of things to point out. Uh, the paragraph that says, we also hope to have some seating directly outside the front of the building for customers. The guidance says that an applicant whose consumption of alcohol is not a life support activity, but when an applicant makes an application and they intend to have some outdoor seating for consumption, they should either show it on their plan or in the written description so the applicants complied with this by mentioning it. You may ask for some further details about outdoor drinking uh, when you ask the applicants given these chance to speak about his application. And you also notice in the police conditions, they have listed some items they need to control consumption of alcohol outdoors. So then the section follows uh, life support activities applied for, alcohol, films, indoor sporting events, live music, recorded music. And then I hope you found it useful. There's a, some paragraph and notes on uh, regulated entertainment that's ne now no longer regulated. Very confusing. There's, and I apologise, there's one error. Uh, under the heading regulated entertainment, third paragraph, it says no licence is required for unamplified live music at any place between 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. if the audience is less than 500. There is, in fact, no audience limit on that entitlement. Sorry, apologies, that's my fault. So a lot of that entertainment that's been applied for is deregulated. But, um, for this application, indoor sporting events, live and recorded music can, if necessary, be conditioned, restricted or removed after 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday, because these activities are licensable after this hour. Uh, then there's explanation about indoor sporting events you may find useful. Uh, moving on to the operating schedule. And the operating schedule is where the applicant describes the steps they will take to uphold the four licensing objectives. And that's set out on page 10. The police wish to some of those requirements so they were minded to make a representation but that was withdrawn when the applicant agreed additional conditions and they're on page 12 and 13 some of these will be familiar to you CCTV, training authorization, challenge 25, incident refusal log uh, not so common is some restrictions about outside areas on page 13 uh, and the requirement for SIA some circumstances. Just one thing, if we could have a minute, if, if you're minded to grant and include some of these police conditions, if on outside areas, if we could change Beaching Road Studio Project to Premises Licence Holder, that's just in case the name of the business changes. It's always the Premises Licence Holder responsibility to uphold conditions. So that's A and B need to be changed to Premises Licence Holder, Stroke, Staff to make those conditions a bit more enforceable if you were minded to grant. And then the police now more common uh, with things such as delivery, etc. Putting some strict conditions on deliveries, which you'll see on page 14. Uh, so that paragraph 3, page 6. There's no previous licensing history at this premises. I didn't include any previous complaints regarding the unit except in an industrial setting. I didn't think they were relevant to this application. Paragraph four, the application was uh, the usual public notice outside and in the newspaper. Just uh, some comments on the public notice outside. The requirement for the applicant would be to post one on the premises and one on the nearest public highway, which would be uh, Beaching Road. Therefore, People in Colbert Road wouldn't necessarily see that notice unless they walk round or walk past it in the car. But Mr Murray did put one either side of uh, the access road to the unit, which we checked at least twice. So that's all fine. So there were four representations received, two in support of the application and two from persons in the vicinity objecting, um, Patricia Morton and Mrs Deeprose. The representations are reproduced in four in Appendix C, and they are mainly objecting to the application with regard to crime disorder and public nuisance. With permission, Chair, I won't read those out word for word. Uh, so, we'll, yeah, thank you. No representations were received from the responsible authorities. 
except for planning did make comment I thought it would be useful for you to reproduce those in their appendix C you'll notice the hours differ of course you'll be aware that the planning and licensing regimes are separate where hours are different it'd be for the particular department to enforce either licensing or planning so I was pleased the representation was withdrawn following the applicant's agreement to the additional provisions I mentioned earlier then moving on to the usual section. Mr. Ryder, could you just speak up a little bit, please? And going on to, is there anything you missed, Councillor? Okay. Uh, paragraph six, the summary, seven is the legislation. And then just to repeat, the uh, options open to you today are to grant the licence subject to conditions, to exclude any activities from the scope of the licence, to refuse to specify the DPS, or to reject the application. And my report. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Randall. Thank you for your very thorough work on this subject. Okay. Uh, we now turn to uh, the responsible authorities. Now, we don't have any actual, uh, no responsible authorities are actually present today, although, as uh, Mr. Randolph has said, yeah. we have received. Yeah. Uh, before you move on to the next item, there is the opportunity for members to ask questions of the licensing officer. Okay, let, let us do that then, please about the evidence he's uh, provided us with. No. No, no? And you don't have any, Mr. Murray, either? No. All right. Very much. All right. Now, at this point, it's the opportunity for the applicant um, to tell us uh, what is the nature of uh, the uh, representations he's making and to present his case. So now, over to you, Mr. Murray, please. Thanks. Thanks very much. Um, well, I've been sort of advised that what I should do is give you a bit of a sort of overview of the business at the moment, what that looks like, um, and then perhaps what our plans are for Beeching Road, um, and then we, we'll go from there. So um, at the moment, we've got a very small um, unit up in Broad Oak, just north of Hastings, um, and that's our production unit and also our tap room. Uh, we've grown from three people to ten employees now, a team of ten um, in the last four or five years. Um, the tap room there is licensed for three days a week, but currently we only trade um, one and a half or two days a week. Um, it's a very, uh, we can't, because of the space we're in, we can't uh, make product and um, be open to the public at the same time. This is a, a thing that we're looking to solve with our move to Beecham Road. Um, it's become a real community hub in the village. There was, when we first opened there, uh, the pub had been bought by a property developer and was closed down, so it was a, became a, a real focal point and a meeting point for the, uh, the local community. It's been really integral to the growth of our business um, because um, people come in and experience in our production facility, uh, tasting our products um, is really good for sort of brand awareness, brand familiarity and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's enabled us to grow a, a local business fairly organically and s sustainably without I think, to, you know, we still, still the original directors, it's still owned locally. And the, the, the tap room is responsible for supporting that growth. Um, we've reached a stage now where we're ready to take the next step. We need, need a bigger unit um, because we're looking to start to sell beer more nationwide. Um, and we hope that a tap room facility will enable us to do that, go out of the county. Um, and it's the same again, you know, it supports brand, it supports um, sort of marketing and, and brand awareness. Um, we can't do any of the events or any of the type of, of events we've got planned in the existing space because it's too small. And it's, um, you know, we have to flip the building basically. One During the week, Monday to Wednesday, it's a production site. Um, and then on Thursday, it gets flipped into a tap room. Um, so what we're um, 
we're, what we're looking to do at Beeching Road is create an environment that would be, in terms of footprint, 80% um, production, which could be all through, all through the week or for the majority of the week, and then 20% um, retail, on sales, that kind of stuff. Um, so we were contacted by the Beeching Road Studios development uh, prior to COVID, actually, asking us if we were interested in moving to that space um, as part of a sort of suitable, creative business. I'm sure you're all aware of the Beach and Road Studios development. Um, then COVID put um, a bit of a dampener on that, obviously. Um, and then we sort of reconvened conversations after COVID. Um, and we went and saw the space. We were really interested. We were very excited. It's just the right size for us. It's in a great location. It's on an industrial site. So, you know, it's traffic for the brewery, like malt deliveries, etc. It's in exactly the right spot for that kind of stuff to happen. Um, so we've managed to generate £170,000, which will be investing into the project. Um, some of that's come from... The existing directors personally, the majority of that has come from um, a government backed bank, which is giving loans for uh, COVID recovery. So they've, they've backed us to the tune of about 90,000. That 90,000 pounds is um, only accessible if we have the income stream of the retail side of things. Um, we're going to, from straight away when we move in, we're going to be recruiting four new people in areas right across the business, not in hospitality. We need people in logistics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the, the tap room, as it supported us in our first stage of growth, if you like, from becoming a, a market stall to a shop, you know, hopefully the tap room at Beeching Road will support us in that next stage where we can start to go further afield and bring, you know, custom custom back into Bex Hill. Um, I can understand um, the, the sort of trepidation of local residents and stuff like that. I can see that when that notice goes up and all, the only information you've got is the hours and the trade, you know, the trading hours that, you know, I think we all have a tendency to go to the worst case scenario. I wanted the opportunity to just say, like, we're not, I know it's, we've got an application, sports, music, etc. We're not a big screen TV type of company. You know, we're not a big sports, Premier League, big groups of people drinking pints of lager and shouting about football. It's not, it's not in keeping with our brand. It's not something I enjoy. It's not something I expect my team to have to manage. Uh, we're not a late night, loud music venue. It's not, again, it's not in keeping with our brand. It's not, I don't want people in my organisation sort of working past 11 o'clock if possible. It's just not, um, it's just not part of who we do. It doesn't align with our company. Um, we're not a vertical drinking sort of volume led environment. It's not what we do. Um, we encourage for our service and our sort of style and the sort of people that engage with our product, seated, communal conversational drinking we're not about standing up and or two for one offers or anything like that it's just not it's just not who we are um you know we're a small quality-led operation that leads to a more expensive product which also deters volume drinking and sort of troublesome alcohol abuse basically it's just not it's just not how it is at our place um so just to hopefully try and ease some um, anxieties or uh, the sort of examples of events that we're talking about doing. Um, two of our team members are also ceramics lecturers. So we're talking about engaging with a ceramic studio over in St. Leonard's and putting on a night where we bring down pottery wheels and we're going to call it Pots and Pints and there'll be, we'll be doing pot throwing competitions, etc., etc. We were looking at community cinema, where over the period of a, a few months, our customers vote on which film they want to see, and then we have an evening where we show it. Uh, we wanted to do some record fairs with music, a modern cast beer festival with some music, 
we did have ideas on a farmer's market, but the planning commission has limited the hours on a Sunday, which so we might have to rethink that one. Um, so, yeah, that's, um, that's what our business is about, really. Um, and I don't think our, our – I mean, I don't know if any of you have experience of our company as it is, but we've got the same objectives. You know, I can't align my company or my brand with public nuisance, um, harmful alcohol abuse. We would be out of the, out of the water. It would be – as detrimental to us as it would be to, to the neighbours. So I think that's worth bearing in mind, really. Um, any questions? Any questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Murray, for your very thorough and detailed account of the history of your company and also your plans for the future. Um, this is the point where the members of the panel will ask you questions, and we look forward to hearing your answers. Um, Councillor Phillips, do you want to ask any questions? Yes. Um, you envisage people being in your brewery drinking, inside or outside? Um, where we are currently, and we hope that it will be the same as Beacon Road, is we've got, uh, so the back of the building, the back 80% of the building will be production, then there'll be a public divide, then there'll be a, a shop slash bar area. There's also a, a crosshatch area out the front of the roller shutter, so yeah. when And if you have a lot of customers, how will you manage sideways overspill? What we do at the moment. What we do at the moment is we've got um, kind of uh, planters that um, put a barrier around that, that area, which tends to keep people inside. And then also a lot of it is about management style and presence and management confidence and that kind of stuff. Um, didn't you said in your presentation that having your tap room would facilitate your ability to sell outside the county. I didn't understand how that would work. Um, because it's a bigger production space, so it means we'll have more product, which means we can start to go outside. Of the it's, the, it's the bigger brewery that makes you go to the outside, not having the tap room. It is the bigger brewery, but the larger picture of the finance around the whole project is that more than 50% of the investment is reliant on us having the income stream from the taproom. The government bank that are lending us that money have said, yeah, we're totally on board. We'd like to lend you this money. We're excited. But if you come back from the licensing panel, let, let us know. Then if you haven't got a license, we'd have to rethink our offer. Maybe helpful to Councillor Phil just explain. Brewing doesn't need a license from us, and nor does if he just to know he sells to Tesco or to another wholesaler. That's fine. It's not covered by a premises license, but deliveries and etc. Disturbance, public nuisance could be something to consider. I just didn't understand the connection between the tap room and selling outside the county. Thank you. I do now. But answer the question. Do you? Yes. Yeah. Answer it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Um, okay, so the current business is in a village. Yep. And you said it created a really lovely community sort of hub. Yeah, we didn't um, expect... We didn't in expect that as a, a thing when we first opened, to be honest. But it was... Yeah, it was nice to see people coming back together and... Yeah, so... My point is, it's obviously very village appropriate, and now there's a switch to town um, where you have a different feel, I guess, um, of, of clientele. Um, I get the impression that this is a um, specialist type of brewery, specialist type of ale or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're a very small producer. Um, so, I mean, in the industry, it's what's called craft brewing. It's more artisanal than Heineken or something of that, of that scale. Okay, so when, when do you expect or how do you expect to attract people to, I mean, what will you be doing? 
advertising or, or or is it something within the industry because i i know a little bit about the industry um so craft beers are followed aren't they so people will come to to the tap room and that's what you're hoping because the tap room is going to support financially yeah. the brewing yeah, yeah. okay Will we bring people to us? Yeah, yeah. What's your yeah. advertising? Program? We don't. Uh, we don't advertise at all. We sort of. We've got over the last seven years, we've built up a really good um, following um, in the local area. A lot of our beer goes, or all of our beer, in fact, goes out as wholesale to Hastings. Recently, we now go as far as Margate. Um, we don't go any further than Brighton in the other direction. So it's just uh, people that like our product. If they're in the area, they come and um, try try it from the source, if you like. Yeah. So, where I'm going with this yeah. is, uh, I'm I'm a little concerned that because it's now a town environment, and people will get to know that it's there, you might encounter um, people that you'd rather not have there because you made quite a point of the type of clientele uh, that you want and you would ex you currently experience. Um, my concern would be in this town environment, there might be characters that, that you probably wouldn't want. Um, so you're, in your schedule, you're going to put in um, procedures and everything. And how many staff are you going to have there, say, for example, in the evenings? How many staff on the premises? At, at the moment, we've got... Um, first of all, I'd say that's uh, my first job when I was 18 was in a pub. And the the sort of phenomena you talk about happens in every pub, in every bar. And, you know, again, I think it's just down to a confident management style. We're, gonna, we've, we're proposing um, three people on the grounds or... Th one man manager or a supervisor and two bartenders um, for the busier shift, um, which is where a lot of the employment is going to come from. Um, because at the moment we currently run with one, sometimes two, up in Broad Oak. So we're aware that um, you know the proximity to more chimney pots, etc., might increase. Um, yeah. um, you know the outside space, yeah. and you're going to try and control it with planters or something yeah. like that. Um, where this is, it's um, screw fix will be closed. Yeah. There won't be anything else going on. There's a huge expanse of area. Um, uh, first, people uh, are uh, going to spill out, aren't they? It's just about constant management. It's, yeah. There's nothing more you can do mm -hmm. apart from put a sort of big ring wire fence or, or something like that. You know, it's just. And also the nature of our customers and the nature of the people that come for our products is they're there because they want to drink our product and meet us. They're not, um, it's like I said earlier on, it we're not a sort of big volume vertical drinking type environment. If you want that, you maybe go to Weatherspoons or, um, you know, where the beer is cheaper, there's special offers, etc., etc. You know, we're not, we're not. I, I think our, our kind of our peak average would maybe be sixty to seventy people. Um, I think probably sitting in the tap room up in Broad Oak now, as you quite rightly point out, is a bit more of a country location. I imagine there's fifteen people in there. So this is a bigger oh, a bigger operation, and you're confident, from what I can gather, yeah. um, that you're going to be able to handle. Yeah, the extra people? The... Like I say, I've been in and around the licensing trade since I was about 18, um, with a deviation into winemaking, back to brewing, and then back into the licensed trade through the tap room. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for those answers, Mr. May. I've got some questions myself about various things. Um, first of all, um, you're saying you've got about 15 people coming to your existing place, which you might have as many as 60 to 70. Do you have experience, or does your staff have experience, 
of handing that volume of people. Yeah, they, they absolutely do. I think mm. it's probably 15 about now, given the time of day. Friday night, some of our busiest nights, and I anticipate if this was a, a good weekend, we would probably buy... 7 o'clock, maybe have 75, 75, 80 people. So it's a regular occurrence, and we've not once had any complaints. The police have never been called. There's never been any disruption. Um, and we're not that... I mean, I, I wouldn't... It's, I'm, I'm sort of speaking off the cuff here, so I would have to check. But there's, there's also houses in proximity to the building we're in now that aren't much further away than uh, Mrs. Morton and Mrs. Deeprose. Um, you know, it's, yeah, we, we absolutely have got experience of that, yeah. Very much. Um, my, my next question is about um, soundproofing. Have you thought about uh, the possibility of any kind of soundproofing which would help to protect the people in Colbert Road? The, it's because it's been the building's been renovated by the council. The it's it's a new breeze block wall. The roof is a brand new, really heavily insulated roof. Um, so it's up to a really modern spec. Um, so I mean, it's, it's we could consider it in the future if problems were to arise. Certainly, but I think at the moment the. The, any windows and doors are, are double glazed and, you know, quite quite sort of weighty modern furniture. We're not moving into an old building like we did seven years ago when we started, which was essentially just a tin, tin hut. Um, should it arise that that was a thing that we had to do, yeah, we'd certainly look at it, but I think it would be unnecessary right now. Can I, can I thank you very much, sir. That's about the actual building, isn't it? And you're saying that we don't need to worry about the building because it's a modern, sort of robust building from that point of view. What about the outside space? Have you thought about things like glass screens and so on, which might be some kind of sound barrier between yourselves and the adjacent street? Yeah, again, we could, if, if it became a problem and it was a, a discussion that was ongoing, we could certainly look at that. Um, I'd much rather manage people in a face-to-face -face way what, rather than... Um, closing them in or, you know, kind of restricting them like that. I'd much rather manage people and we find it pays dividends all the time, you know, rather than putting a sign up that says don't do this, that the conversation is had or the tone is set or, you know. Um, but certainly something like that, if it, you know, if in the problem, any, if in the future any problem arises that we could solve mechanically and we thought it was going to work, we could look at that kind of stuff. Very much. And then next... Um, I noticed you said in your presentation that you didn't want your employees to be working after 11 o'clock at night, and yet uh, part of your application uh, would give you permission to work beyond that time. Can I just ask, why did you decide to go for a longer period of time than you want your staff to work? Please? Because... Um, so if there were once in a blue moon something they wanted to go on a bit later, um, what I should have said is I don't want my staff or my team or myself to work past 11 o'clock regularly. Um, but we would like some flexibility from the alcohol licence so that if there were an event or um, somebody wanted, you know, if, if, if that opportunity arose um, and it was an event we could align ourselves with, then it would be nice to have that flexibility. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, okay, but but you're you're asking for every every um, Friday and Saturday to go up to midnight. So if the events are going to be sporadic, you could you could ask for temporary event notice. Um, but that's correct, isn't it, Randall? That's correct, Councillor. Obviously, there's cost implications. It's cost implication £21 all the time. Somebody wants to do that.
quite a small company. The cost and the sort of administrative pressure is uh, not insignificant in the in the current climate. Sorry, uh, Mr. Randolph. Just to expand on temporary event notices. Of course, there are no conditions attached to those. We would much prefer ignite activities to be controlled by a premises license with strict conditions, if you're mindful to grant. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to make it clear that it, it was an option, but not a great one. Thank you. Yes, I feel. Yes, I have another one. Thinking about public nuisance, I spend a lot of my time in Lewis, and in Hoa Vigibruin, the smell is very pervasive. So what are you going to do about controlling the smell for your staff and also for the surrounding neighbourhood? Firstly, we are a much smaller operation than Harvey's, um, so we produce a significantly lower volume of beer in any one brew, brew day. Um, and we've fitted the, the part of the equipment, or the piece of equipment in the brewing process that emits that smell is the kettle. We've got quite a modern kettle that I'm not sure how up-to-date Harvest is. I mean, they're quite a traditional brewery. Um, so our kettle has a, a thing where the steam goes up and it passes through a, um, a series of water jets. So it takes the steam and the vapour out of the air and drops it on the floor and it runs to a drain as, a, um, as, as water. So it takes the, uh, the smell out of the air, the smell of the steam out of the air. So there's no smell at all? There's a tiny, it? tiny bit of smell. If you were standing in the room, I mean, the easiest way to describe it would be if you came and, and stood on a brew day. You can smell it, um, but nowhere near. I've been in Lewis as well when Harvard's a brew. It's nowhere. Thank you very much. Can I just ask you about the, the mix of activities? Because you, you have an interesting mix there. You've got your sporting events, you've got your cinema and so on. Can you tell us how, what, do you, what, what a schedule of events be like once you've kind of settled down and it's working the way you'd like it to, please? Yeah, we're looking at maybe, I mean, first of all, events are paramount now. I think the way people socialise well, since COVID, but also before that, I think people are, are, are leaning towards uh, a sort of flight to quality, if you like. I think people, rather than going out on a Friday night and drinking 12 pints like maybe would have happened uh, 20 years ago, what people want now is something more experiential. They want something um, that perhaps they pay a little bit more for but don't consume quite as much. Um, and if you can add the experiential thing onto that, like a film, or a, um, then it makes the whole thing more fun, more enjoyable, and more sustainable. Um, so I think we'd be looking at kind of one event a week, something like that. Um, not least of all, because we haven't got the manpower or the team to sort of administer many, many more than that. Um, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Tim. Yeah, thank you. Um, could I just ask you about, because um, in the conditions um, there's something about lighting, outside, outside lighting. Yeah, that's right. um, are you planning for the lighting to be downward because of our dark skies policy? That, that will happen? That um, lighting isn't installed as yet, so we can install whatever, whatever suits. Okay, so we, we can actually condition that, can we? Uh, the police would like good lighting for CCTV to work. I hear what you're saying. The police would like light. Is the speaker not working? So I've got a sore throat. The, the police would like good lighting for CCTV to pick up the pictures. We but, can also get CCTV that works in the dark. So I don't know if that would be a. But then you've got to consider the disturbance to neighbours. Well, that, that's what I'm getting at, that, that it will be, um, you'll be cognizant of, of light pollution for neighbours. Yeah, okay, thanks. I don't personally have any further questions. No. Uh, do, do Mr. Randolph, do you have one? Yeah, it's not my place to ask questions, but it just picks up a couple of technical issues that may help you in your decision making, and also Mr. Murray, if I may. Can I ask sure, sure. So... When Mr. Murray was giving his introduction, he mentioned people drinking alcohol inside seated. Is that something he's going to offer the committee as a condition? 
the question, would you, are you, uh, would you be satisfied with that being a condition that we would impose? It doesn't give us a lot of flexibility in our space um, in, in, a, in, a, in a kind of new venture. But, yeah, I could. I think we could, we could go with that. I mean, it's in keeping with our style, so I wouldn't see it being a problem. So that would be, in, in, uh, it would be consonant with your image, the brand you want to create. I, I think do. so, yeah. yeah. I okay. couldn't agree to... Um, so the um, a table service style, um, because that has implications on cost and staffing and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but we we encourage everybody to sit down and relax anyway. So I don't. Yeah, I don't think that would be a problem. Is there any other questions? Sorry. Yes. Which other four? The Thank second you. one, if I can look at page 10. Ben, have you got this? Page 10. About halfway down, it says all alcohol sold, be sold in pre-calibrated containers. Yeah. So I could probably buy a box of wine, but not a glass of wine. Is that what you're saying? No, you can buy... Uh, so that's what you are saying. In that. <laughs> you can buy a pre... I'm sure you know. I just think we mainly need to make that a bit clearer, that condition. Uh, uh, so we may need to add, if you're minded to go on, a glass of a, uh, what's the word, a drinking vessel. Just point to something there. You've got wine glasses. You're selling wine as well as beer? Uh, we offer uh, one, one white, one red. Uh, it's not every wine really. Uh, it's a party. Right. Nice drinks, gin. Uh, and we it's... do a local style. Uh, more often than not, Can I quickly follow up on Councillor Phil's question there? Would you also be offering whiskey, brandy, other spirits? No, not spirits. Okay, thank you. Stop again, please. Yeah, councillors have asked questions about uh, maximum capacity. I think I did email Mr Murray and asked him if he could give an indication on the maximum capacity for his fire risk assessment. Yeah, did you? We're, we're, um, yeah, we'd be looking at um, a peak average of about 80 um, and a maximum, perhaps maximum for particular events being of uh, 150. What is the maximum on your fire safety risk assessment? What's yeah, the maximum? 150. 150. Yeah. Yes. There's no, we have no restriction on the outside, obviously, because it's on the outside. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's where it could get a bit out of hand, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> and last problem is about, you've asked questions about outside drinking, and then there's uh, Mr Murray's volunteer at the 10pm, the police have also reinforced 10pm. What about if we granted till midnight on this Friday and Saturday, smoking, people going outside to smoke, common cause of disturbance to other residents, etc., just to be aware Perhaps you may consider asking uh, questions. Uh, and again, staff training. Can I can I ask how are you envisioning people? Um, getting to your place? Would they come by car? And if so, what are your ideas about how the parking would work, please? It's not really, I mean, 
90% of our customers don't drive. Part of the appeal of the unit was um, that it's 10, 15 minutes away from the train station. Um, a lot of our existing customers live in Hastings, St. Leonard's, so we would imagine that they will be travelling along on the rail. So, yeah, I'm not um, walking. We're not, um, like I say, look, most people that come don't, don't drive um, because they can't. Um. And you had any further questions, this chess, Mr. Randolph? No more questions. Thank you very much for those helpful suggestions you've made. Appreciate it. Physician uh, Morton, please. The first thing I wanted to say, really, was that. Uh, it's really, really good to see that your business is thriving. Uh, it must have taken a lot of hard work to get there. And uh, I really do wish you well. I congratulate you. I did pop in. I don't know if you remember, because I'd been involved with them. I just popped in to see where, where you oh, are right. at the moment. And I thought, oh, yes, you really have outgrown where you are. I can quite see the appeal of, of the Beach and Road Studios. The brewery itself, I'm not worried about at all, but I am concerned about the tap room. Now, when I read your initial um, uh, concept proposal, it really does sound lovely. And when you started talking about it just now, it still sounded lovely, um, something that I and lots of my friends would would probably, well, certainly, would like to go to. I mean, I quite like craft beer, so. <laughs> and I'm within about 60 or 70 metres of you, so it would only be a little bit of a thing on my Zimmer frame and I could get to you. But, um, and then listening to you talking a bit more about the number of people, uh, well, the first concern was actually the licence application because your taproom trading hours in your concept proposal were very much, am I speaking in the right place, were very much reduced from, from this licence application. And given how close you are to properties, I thought the original taproom trading hours were a very good balance. You would close on Mondays and Tuesdays, and the latest closing hour on Friday and Saturday was half past ten, which sounded very fair, given where the situation is. But looking at what you're asking for now and listening to the questions that, that have been asked and, and to your replies, the thought really of having maybe 150 people in that space um, and an average of 80, that's a lot of people in an area which is in the evening, there's no other activity. So it's very quiet. And it's very close to residential houses. Um, I live opposite the... I'm on, I'm, I'm on the other side of Colbrook Road. I'm on the um, corner of Colbrook Road and Cranston Ave Avenue, and just opposite the alleyway. Now, there's already quite a lot of antisocial behaviour in that alleyway. Um, I find it noisy uh, from time to time. The more people that are there, the noisier it's going to be. The longer you hold your events for, the later you close. Potentially, the more disruptive it's going to be in what basically is a quiet residential area. And those are my concerns, um, I think. It's always a shame to have lots of light pollution as well. Although I can quite see that the police would want it to be well lit. Everything else in that area, the latest that anything was open was screw fix at 8 o'clock and after that it, it's very quiet and what you're proposing is something that will be completely different. And 
I, I am really quite concerned, although your original concept really does sound delightful. It doesn't sound quite so delightful now, I'm afraid. Any questions? No, thank you very much um, for setting it out so clearly. Can I just ask, Mr Cohen, would it be better for us, do you think, to question each individual person making a representation, or would it be better to hear from the two people and then question the two together? Can I, can I just interest in your thinking on that? I think the best way to do it with this chair is to now ask questions to the person making representations has just spoken, yeah. and then once that questioning is concluded, we move on to the next person making representation, and we deal with questions for that. Thank you very much for that recommendation. Kim, please. Thank you. I don't live in Bexhill, and I don't know the area at all, but I do know Beeching Road slightly because I've been stopping some things along the way. But the photographs show a wall at the end of between Colbrook Road and Beeching Road, yes, a highish wall, with with trees, which currently are not in leaf, but in summer when people are sitting out having their beer and their glasses of wine, um, will be in leaf. Do you think that will mitigate the noise at all? I would doubt it. The, the, the wall might look high from the beach and roadside, but it's actually on a slope, so the houses are, are actually a bit higher than that. Thank you. I think the member panel will be asking some questions. You'll have another chance to speak later on. Okay. Any further questions? No, uh, yes, Councillor Tim. Thank you, Chair. Um, you mentioned uh, an alleyway. Because um, I'm quite familiar with the, this area and the screw fix. And I don't know where that alleyway is. The alleyway runs on the northern side of the Beeching Road Studios. So between the car, the Beeching Road Studios and the car, the car repair. So it's not exactly running off of this premises. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't run directly off the premises. It runs off Beeching Road. So as, as people come out of the premises, if they want to go um, to Cranston Avenue, they will walk along that alleyway. People coming from town in the evenings walk along it anyway, and um, it can be quite noisy. And I think that will, that will just add to it. And late at night, I mean, it doesn't matter, but, you know, uh, obviously in a normal evening time, but when, when, it, when it gets to sort of midnight and people are going home and, and beyond, it's can be quite disruptive. Mr Murray, though, um, in his um, answers to some questions, felt that most of his clientele would come by train from places and walk or whatever. So I'm not sure how that alleyway is really relevant. I could, I could be totally wrong, but... Well, it depends which direction they're walking from. That's all I can say. If their walk, it, the alleyway is just to, well, it, I think it shows it on the plan. I think that we're, it, the, will, the likelihood is to have increased footfall. footfall. And off. Chair, if you turn to page 16 on your papers, yeah. there's, a, there's a, essentially a map which shows the premises yep. um, in, its in its location. Um, it might be worth just so it's clear where exactly we're talking about with this alleyway, if it can be clarified. Is it, is it at the, the top left of this where you've got uh, what looks like uh, some kind of... Yeah. Um, pathway of some kind going off into the, 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 the box that's sort of one, uh, two in from the left. Is that the one we're talking about? Yep. Is it 
You've got it. Yeah. Okay. And then there's, and then there's so, clear with where the alleyway is. Yeah, yes. yes. clear where the alleyway is. I'm, I'm just, um, when you think about where the station is, um, people wouldn't be walking that way. They walk, they'll walk um, down Beaching Road and, and up uh, Buckhurst, maybe up to Sea Road or whatever. Um, and, and you already have people walking through it. Yeah? You already have people walking through it. It's a well-used alleyway. Yes, but it would, right? there would be... Yes, it is a well-used alleyway. It connects up your cross beaching road with another alleyway. Yeah. And, it, and it's great. You can get into town really quickly. It's really... It's very, very useful. But my concern is that it will... There will be, especially since you're having a licence is closing at 12, there will be quite a lot of people, I imagine, because people will, will come from that side. They won't all come on the train, in the Hastings. <laughs> people will be coming from that side and they'll be walking home. Um, and I'm hoping that the clientele will be the kind of people one would be really happy to have walking home at that time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, from my own experience, the craft beer drinkers and followers are, are pretty much um, a mellow sort of group and, and mature, I, I would think. So, um, is this alleyway lit? Is there any lighting? Uh, yes. It is, okay. And has there ever been any problem, any trouble? Oh, yes. Yes, oh dear. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Timby. Um, can I just start up with a few questions? Um, Corbett Road is a very nice road, isn't it? Tree-lined, very attractive place. Um, and the houses have large gardens. Pretty large gardens, surely. No? It would depend upon what your idea is large, wouldn't it? Uh, some of the gardens are large, further up the road. Most of them are, I would just say, medium, small. Quite, they're not very big plots. Further up the road, because the road isn't straight, rather, um, there are uh, large gardens, yes. But big enough gardens to socialise in. So my guess is that people would use their gardens for socialising, having friends round, etc., maybe having children playing. So I'm guessing there would be a level of noise coming from adjacent gardens. With, with, is that your experience, please? Occasionally. Not very often. Ask you about your own sense of noise, uh, your own tolerance of noise, if you like. I mean, you're living in an urban area. To what extent would you feel some level of noise is to be expected if you live in an urban area? Oh, absolutely. Just, uh, just yeah. asking for your opinion. Yes, of course, there's, there's a level of noise to be expected, and, and that um, is, is quite normal. I think it's the extra noise of what sounds like a lot of people that um, is, is a concern. Could you tell us what your own idea is of the kind of restrictions that could be placed upon these premises that would enable you to feel that you can enjoy your garden, your home, in the way in which you would like? It would be helpful. Thank you. I think it really hinges on the opening hours. I think 12 o'clock is Saturdays and Sundays is quite late um, for, for where it is. And... Um, they have the hours that were proposed by in the planning, uh, well, whatever planning proposed, I think are much, much more acceptable. From what you said, it sounds as if you, you would quite welcome the idea of the place, that it would be an extra facility, an extra amenity, um, that you might even think of using yourself in the, in, at the right time. Yes, very much so, very much so. I think it sounds really interesting. Um, as I say, my only concern, I haven't quite envisaged so many people. Uh, 150 is a lot of people. And um, I don't know how many you're allowed to actually have inside. Um, if we were talking about after 10 o'clock, people being inside. I think I understand from the answers we've got already 
that because of fire regulations, mm -hmm. that is said, Mr. Randolph, I've got this right, the maximum inside would be 150. Is that right, Mr. Randolph, please? Yeah, that's... In the old days, you used to have capacity limits for the fire safety regulations coming in, and they will set a limit. You could be minded on that limit, but it's for you, you could impose a lower limit for the sake of a premises license if you wish to. Fair enough. I don't have any further questions. Do either of my colleagues have further questions, or would you? Have you got any to ask, Mr. Randolph? I don't think I'm allowed to ask. <laughs> in which case, please, can I hear from Mrs. Deepwaters, please? Looking forward to what you've got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's just to clarify my letter, which stated that our main objection is that the hours proposed would have a harmful impact on nearby residential properties with regards to public nuisance and noise and would therefore not promote the associated licensing objective. At its closest point, our garden is around 30 metres from the building and closer if you include the other areas of land involved, which are almost immediately adjacent to our property. There is currently no late evening activities or disturbances from businesses, pedestrians or vehicles, and at present the main businesses in the area, being Screwfix and Phase Electrical, operate at what we consider to be irrelevant normal business hours, with no impact on our amenities. These businesses are quite different in terms of their use and do not consist of the same activities or services than the business we are discussing today. <clears throat> to approve the license application, we feel would intrude a harmful level of noise and disturbance for such things as vehicles, customers on site, arriving and leaving the site, moving of tables and chairs, glasses, um, as well as the use itself that currently doesn't exist. This, we feel, would be made worse by the fact that part of the use will take place outside and that the building itself will have an open frontage when in use. Any noise will also echo in the industrial site. We do not feel that it is a case of controlling noise during the late evening, rather a case of not allowing it to be a potential issue to begin with. If the licence application was approved, again, we feel that it would generate a level of harm with regards to public nuisance and noise that doesn't currently exist. The licence, we feel, would ensure that it would. We are not objecting to the idea of the business, rather the hours proposed and its impact. We would rather see the hours reflective, say, of screw fix, as this is what we would consider to be close closer to normal business operating hours and acceptable in terms of the impact on our property. At the very latest and only during the week, Screwfix closes at 8. This is also understood to be the same time that the brewery's premises in Breed is permitted to open until. We do feel very strongly that the late night opening hours, with everything else that comes with the licence, would in reality make this a drinking establishment, which is not what it is meant to be, and the knock-on impact of that, we feel, would result in the failure to meet the relevant licensing objects. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank both of you, by the way, for the uh, way in which you presented your case today. Uh, it's been very clear, and also put, put very reasonably to, to the committee, so thank you both. And now we have an opportunity for the panel to ask you questions. Uh, Councillor Field, please. Thank you. Just for clarification, really, you used the pronoun we a lot during your presentation. Are you talking on behalf of all your neighbours or just yourself and your family? My husband and I, yes. Any further questions, then? Um, Councillor Timpey. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for, for outlining your concerns. Um, I'm struggling with trying to... Um, compare a business like Screwfix with a business such as a craft brewery. And I'm not sure that the comparison is valid as far as hours. Um, do you know of anywhere, any other craft brewery that would actually be closing at 8? Is it 8 or 8.30 they close? 
screw fix? I can't remember. Um, eight o'clock screw fix, but it's the noise level after eight o'clock when we've got all our windows and doors open or sitting out on our patio. That's what we're concerned about, just the noise level of everything. Yeah, I, c I can appreciate that because um, anybody who sits in their garden in any urban area is going to have noise, aren't they? Um, from what, whatever might be going on uh, in the neighbourhood. Um, the impression I got from Mr. Murray, though, was that um, th everything would go back inside at 10 o'clock. Is that right? So you wouldn't be having any noise outside beyond 10 o'clock. Is that correct? Am yes, I am I remembering? But what I'm aware of, it's a shutter, it's not a door. So while people are inside, you're going to have to have the shutter up. I would have. You're thinking that the shutter would, would like the fire brigade would say, you've got, you've got to have the shutter open. Is that, is that yes. what you're thinking? I can't imagine that that's right. Mr. The shutter door in the photograph is quite unique, quite large. And I can't ask a question of Mrs. Debrose. But there is a point you may wish to ask Mr. Murray about, about will that door be open or closed during operating? It's quite a large door. I can imagine if that door is open, it would turn the building into a speaker. And it's basically the type of construction. So before 10 and after 10, will this very door be up and down, or open or closed, partly open? Maybe questions you'd like to ask Mr. Murray. Yeah, we'll certainly do that when we're finished with Mrs. Deepress. Um So let's just assume that um, everything's gone back inside from 10 o'clock. Um, would you not find that reasonable? Because you're only talking a couple of hours of noise that you would consider noise. I don't think, I think 10 o'clock, half past 10 is late enough for premises like that. It echoes. You can hear it. When it's quiet, still evening, you can hear noise. Okay, I'm, I'm struggling with, with the fact that um, no, noise is what happens in, in where, wherever you live. Um, so I'm, I'm, and we have, unless I'm incorrect, we have no right to limit noise to, I mean, I know there are noise limiters and there are noise decibels and all that good stuff, but it seems to me that to not want any noise it is unreasonable. Mr. Randolph, again, please. I didn't so say, no. sorry. Oh, sorry, I didn't say any noise at all. I know there's going to be noise, but it's People coming and going, if they come in cars, there's going to be slamming of car doors, there's going to be people talking. If they have sporting events, they're going to be... You'll be able to hear it all. Can we just hear what Mr D uh, Randolph has got to say? Thank you very much. So there's no right to silence, but one of the most important licensing objectives is public nuisance. If one or two people in a residential home is disturbed, that's something you must consider. And then you would be considering steps Mr Murray will be taking to minimise that public nuisance. Uh, things like conditions that uh, noise from the premises will be barely audible at the nearest residential premises, perhaps after a certain time is quite common, uh, rather than screams, uh, etc., and, and trees, much more be precise that disturbance from this premises won't disturb nearby residential premises after a certain time. That's quite easy to monitor because we'll just go along stand in the garden and we could then decide whether the noise was a nuisance or not. I, yes. Sorry, Mr. Randolph. I'd, I'd be concerned. I mean, I can understand how you could control that. Um, but this is an open space in an, on an industrial estate. And I'm not sure whatever measures we say to limit noise would actually work because 
of the environment it's in. Councillor uh, can I just make a suggestion? Maybe this is a discussion which we can have amongst ourselves when we... Yeah, we can, when we, we did can, it, but right. I'm, I'm but, asking uh, the, ex the experts. Yes, uh, by the way. Noise is a very debatable subject, isn't it? You can have two people just talking outside the licensed premises, causing disturbance to the people, the right wind conditions, etc. It's a, a big topic. It's, it's, it's to us, isn't it, as the panel, to balance, okay, the, the rights of, of the individuals um, who have a right, uh, I would say, to the sort of reasonable enjoyment of their own premises against the right of the applicant to, to set up a business. Um, which would, would have advantages to his customers and for the town. So it's our job to balance those things, isn't it? Um, Councillor Thiel, please. I realise I'm straying here from normal procedure, but I would just like to ask Mr Randolph, because you mentioned if the doors open, it acts like a speaker. You often see roller doors with sort of extra pedestrian-type doors inserted in them, so you can either have it as a roller door to let big plants in and out, or an ordinary door to let people in and out. Would that make it less noisy. Uh, I'm not sure Mr Murray would need that because he's got the side access door to the left, hasn't he? The pedestrian door. So we could condition that the people come in and out by the side door, not by the roller door. It's definitely something you could consider, yeah. Uh, Mr Cairn. Chair, I was just going to suggest, I appreciate it's, it's moving slightly away from the procedure Given it's a topic that keeps coming up, it, it might be worth at this point just getting the applicant to confirm what his position is in terms of the front, the front, the frontage, and the, the entrance, because it, it seems we don't really have a clear picture at this point as to what that will be. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah that sounds a, yeah, that's, something that's which really great. needs to be clarified because that's obviously where you know the, the nub of the that's issue is, is, isn't it? Yeah. Whether um, these people outside so will we have, create an unreasonable um, disturbance. We have a shutter exactly the same in our existing premises. What we, when we're open and it's a nice day, because you know we've got uh, we need a line. If there are people sitting outside on chairs, you need a line of sight for them to be able to keep an eye on things, make sure that everybody's getting along nicely, not making too much noise, etc. So what we do there is we keep the door just above head height, and in turn, what we're that we're going to do, because putting in a room like that with lots of hard surfaces and people standing around, noise can um, ping around. What we do is a, a sort of, and then it becomes not a nice place to sit, to be honest, because the noise is hard, there's no soft furnishings in there. Uh, so what we do is like a sound treatment on the space um, where we hang lots of cloth, we use a lot of plants, um, and what this does is stop the noise bouncing it bouncing around, the, the, the main motivation for that is to make it a more pleasant place to be. Um, so it's a more relaxed environment rather than a cold, hard, noisy space. Um, and the benefit of that also is that it stops the noise bouncing around straight out the front door. It's, um, you know, so again, our, our, our wants kind of align, you know. I don't want that room to be like a big speaker with loads of hard sound coming out of it, just as these guys don't. Um, uh, but part of the, the, the shutter being up does make for uh, when you enter the building and you walk through a big door like that. Um, and we only do that when the weather's good, obviously, otherwise it's freezing cold inside. Um, part of that experience really adds to the experience of the customer because it's, you know, for some of these people, maybe it's the first time they've been to a brewery. So to get a full face of it like that is a really nice experience. And then in the colder months, we do the flip of that where we just have the door um, and it's we we try and make that entrance like a sort of like a discovery for someone so we build a a wall behind that door so as they walk through the door they have to go around a corner and something opens up in front of them you know there's merchandising benefit to both approaches um, so it would be a real shame if we couldn't use that shutter firstly it would mean that we weren't connected with customers that were sitting outside and also it would lessen the experience for our customers. Um, and I think perhaps one that's more important for you is, or for this panel, is um, the line of sight between us and our customers sitting outside. Um, that is the best way to keep noise down. 
to, for us to keep that control. Can I just ask, I'm not quite clear what you were saying there, because on the one hand you seem to be saying there's some kind of wall which would be between the entrance oh, and the customers, sorry, and the second time you were saying how you could see It's the directly. two different, yes, sorry, I've not been clear. It's the two different entrances. In the wintertime we use the one door to the side of the shutter, and we try and make that like, a, you know, someone's discovering something on their entrance. And in the summer when the shutter's up, we use that to the opposite effect which is they round the corner through this big door and there's something quite theatrical for them to look at um does that make sense yes yeah. perfect yeah. sense thank you very much okay are there any further questions from members of the panel to that there aren't okay right at this point uh, it's now for the people who have made representations that's uh, uh christine and patricia to sum up their case and then after that, it will be your opportunity to sum up yours. So would you like to sum up um, your position at the end, as we come towards the end of our hearing today? Thank you very much. ...is as it was, um, but I feel that the hours that are <clears throat> being asked for are too long. Um, uh, and that I, I would... I, I would I would go along with the I would prefer if the hours that were uh, given by the planning committee were were not all too long. Thank you very much. And now, Mrs. Deepraise. Um Yes, just to say we're not objecting to um, the the brewery, but it's the hours proposed and what it can lead to. I mean, it sounds more like a pub than it does a tap room. Thank you both very much, and thank you for taking the trouble, both of you, uh, to come here today and present your case so clearly. But much appreciated. Thank you. And now it's your opportunity, Mr Murray, to reply to what has been said on the other side and to let us know your case. Thanks. Um, well, I think be, by objecting to the tap room in itself, you know, the two sides of the business are intrinsically linked and there can't be one without the other. So to object to one is to object to the whole thing, really. Um, I totally understand your um, concern around noise and stuff like that. Um, I don't think any of it's unreasonable at all. Um, the alley, Around antisocial behaviour in the alleyway, you're saying that that already, um, already happens. Um, whether... That business, that building is a second-hand car showroom or a, a brewery with a tap, that problem persists. So to sort of hinder growth and job creation, et cetera, et cetera, for a problem that might get worse, that's, um, you, you know, it, it, a problem that's in an area that's totally unrelated to what we're proposing, um, just sort of speaks of anxiety. It's not... You know, we can't sort of project what might happen. I think um, in, in regarding the, pho the photographs, the, I think it's a point needs to be made that the, the wall nearest to the garden isn't our unit. There's a whole unit between our unit and the wall you can see in the photographs. Um, the screw fix comparison, I'm not really sure about. I mean then we would be opening earlier, closing earlier. I'm not sure that's a healthy way. Um, you know, I'm not sure what we're encouraging there, licensing-wise, um, or alcohol consumption-wise. Doesn't doesn't really work for me. They're two completely different entities. Um, one other piece of information, uh, in conversations with the lease, uh, sorry, in negotiations around the lease for the unit with the council, there's some conversation being had about finishing. Is there a partial fence at the end of your garden? Is there one that stops? Oh, right. Oh, you don't back on to... Oh, right. Yes, it's a fence. Um, there is, a, is there a fence that hasn't been completed? A fence that hasn't been completed. It stops halfway across our... Yeah, now I believe the council, when we're in negotiations around the lease, there was something mentioned about uh, finishing that incomplete fence. Um, 
Also, there's been noise guidance notes placed on our planning permission. Um, so if we don't abide to them, then we're, you know, if we don't fit in with them, then we're breaking planning law. That's not going to go well. Um, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's me in summary, really, unless anyone's got any more questions or... I think I'd just like to, to ask Mr. Murray, um, given that there's an empty unit on the other side, which is closer to the houses, do you have any at the moment, or do you think you might have future plans to expand into that? Do, do you mind my saying so? But I'm, I hope you don't mind. But we've got to consider the application we've got. Oh, I do think you're fine. So I'm sorry, I'm but, you know, but, but it's a good... I think, I think we're done. Thank you very much, everybody, for the submissions you've made. We're very, very grateful for them. And now it's our job to retire and come up with a decision, which we will now do. So, we'll come back week, and we will come back um, and let you know uh, your decision. Uh, say we're about half an hour, do you think that's a reasonable? Chair, I, yeah. I think the thing to suggest yeah. is that um, if you're going to go and deliberate, um, deliberations take as long as they take. Um, you can't really limit it to a time. But um, if uh, the parties want to stay, uh, you will come back and give the decision verbally, and then the written decision in full with the reasons will go uh, via post within five days. Thank you. Right, okay, so, so if you would like to hang around, uh, we, we will be back with the decision we've made. Um, are you in proposing to do that? Are you going to stay and wait, or...? You are? OK? All right. Then we'll, we'll have a chance to hear from us later on this afternoon. Um, we've made our decision, and I'll now uh, say what that is. So, uh, basically, we were considering um, an application by the Three Lakes Brewing Company um, in relation to um, a series of, of requests. And what we had decided to do is to grant the application. We'd listened carefully to all the submissions, and we're bound to be directed by the principal licensing objectives and material considerations, and they are the prevention of crime and disorder, public safety, prevention of public nuisance, and protection of children from harm. On balance, the panel accepts the evidence provided in support of the premises license application, together with the letters of objection, and has decided to grant the application subject to conditions. In recognising the concerns raised about the specific issues under the licensing objectives, the application is granted, subject to the following conditions. So the proposed activities and the days and times will be as follows. Retail sale of alcohol, Monday, 12 o'clock to 20 hundred hours. Tuesday, 12 o'clock to 20 hundred hours. Wednesday, 12 o'clock to 2200 hours. Thursday, 12 o'clock to 2200 hours. Friday, 12 o'clock to 22.30 hours. Saturday, 12 o'clock to 22.30 hours. Sunday, 12 o'clock to 20 hours. And that applies to on and off sales. For films, Monday, 12 to uh, 20. Tuesday, 12 to 22. Wednesday, 12 to 22. Thursday, 12 to 22. Friday, 12 to 22.30. Saturday, 12 o'clock to 22.30. Sunday, 12 o'clock to 20 hours. So indoor sporting events, uh, Monday, 10 o'clock to 20 hours. Tuesday, 10 o'clock to 22. Wednesday, 10 o'clock to 22. Thursday, 10 o'clock to 22. Friday, 10 o'clock to 22.30. Saturday, 10 o'clock to 22.30. Sunday, 10 o'clock to 20. Live music, Monday, 10 to 20. 
Tuesday, 10 to 22. Wednesday, 10 to 22. Thursday, 10 to 22. Friday, 10 to 22. 30. Saturday, 10 to 22. 30. Sunday, 10 to 20. Recorded music, 10 to 20. Tuesday, uh, 10 to 22. Wednesday, 10 to 22. Thursday, 20, 10 to 22. Friday, 10 to 22. 30. Saturday, 10 to 22. 30. And Sunday, 10 to 20. So you can see there's complete consistency between those, those uh, acceptances. Now, the hours the premises are to be open, um, the hours stated on the application form, uh, Monday, 10 to 20, Tuesday, 10 to 22, Wednesday, 10 to 22, Thursday, 10 to 22, Friday, 10 to 22, 30, Saturday, 10 to 22, 30, Sunday, 10 to 20. Now, certain conditions were offered by the applicant, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm only going to draw attention to variations, okay? So, so more or less, they will be as the applicant asked, but there will be these, these differences. First of all, um, condition, under condition B, um, all alcohol sold will be in pre-calibrated drinking vessels. So that's a change, the, the, the expression drinking vessels. Then... Going forward, the next change is the outside areas will now include the phrase designated premises, supervisor or staff. And so that's actually the name of the premises because that might alter at some point in the future. So there's a change of expression there. And similarly, the same language will be followed through. So under B, it will say designated premises, supervisor or staff. C, now this is a, a different one. We, we want to impose a new one the outside areas are to be well lighted with downward directed lighting. And that's obviously in accordance with the council policy about uh, dark skies. So that's the point of that. So that's an additional one. Then on top of that, the committee decided to impose the following additional conditions. Firstly, A, noise or vibration shall not emanate from the premises so as to cause a nuisance to the occupants of nearby properties. And B, customers must be seated when consuming alcohol outside. So we've imposed those additional conditions. And I think it's important to say that you, you now have a right of appeal, okay? And the right of appeal also extends uh, to persons who have made representations where the licence has been granted or where relevant conditions have not been imposed upon the licence. And your full rights of appeal can be found within Schedule 5 of the Act. Any appeal should be made to the Magistrates' Court, Edward Street, Brighton, within 21 days from the date of notification of the decision. You must contact the Magistrates' Court to establish the form of procedure for the appeal. And this decision will now come out in writing to the people concerned. I'd like to thank everybody who's taken part in our decision-making process this afternoon, both the applicant and the people who've made representations. I would like to thank Mr Randolph, the Senior Environmental Health Officer, for his contributions. I'd like to thank uh, Louise Hollingsworth, who has been the Secretary of the Committee. I'd like to thank the two councillors who have also helped to make the decision, Councillor Timpey and Councillor Field. And lastly, but by no means least, I'd like to thank Mr Robert Cohen, the Solicitor uh, Lawyer, involved in helping us with the legal side of our deliberations. So thank you very much to everybody, and I hope you'll go away feeling that what we have arrived at is an appropriate decision under the circumstances. Thank you all very much indeed.